Hey everybody and welcome back to Mighty Ride Junkies with the first installment of SeaWorld San Diego, the original SeaWorld theme park. The idea for SeaWorld actually started off much smaller in scale. You see four college friends, George Malay, Milton Shedd, David DeMont and Ken Norris got together in 1961 to build a restaurant in Long Beach, California. Malay was the head honcho, so to speak, and wanted to add a bar within the restaurant. Inside the bar would have been the perfect view of an aquarium with larger-than-life sea creatures. The idea eventually spawned into watching dolphins swimming through hoops and doing all sorts of tricks. The four friends saw the issues that eventually would arise with construction and maintaining this restaurant and realized it wouldn't be practical money-wise. The friends scrapped the idea with a full-on aquarium that would have different variety of shows within it. The pitches were made, the promises were signed, and the future began. By the end of 1961, the City Council of San Diego approved a 22-acre plan. The four friends put up $1.5 million to start the construction of the park. Ironically, the city of San Diego had been looking for an aquarium for some time. Way back in 1945, a plan was approved to make Mission Bay, the area behind the SeaWorld of today, a main tourist attraction. Within the plan, $2 million was approved to make a state-of-the-art aquarium, but with no one stepping up to build the area or knowing how to run it, the money sat, waiting for someone to step up. It took 16 years before the money was issued to the idea of a marine life theme park. Construction immediately started, and on March 21st, 1964, SeaWorld San Diego officially opened with less than three dozen marine wildlife, two shows, and it only cost you $2.25 to see it all. An opening day could have gone better. Outside of the park, protests were going on due to labor disputes during the construction stages for the park. What made it worse was the current mayor of San Diego was supporting the boycott. Inside the park, two main issues had become a noticeable problem. By midday, the sewer system had backed up, causing every toilet in the park to overflow. The second issue was the filtration system for the aquariums. The systems were not up to par, and a lot of this caused the foggy glass look combined with the unclear waters it made seeing the sea life inside the aquarium almost impossible. But somehow, the park had won over the press. The next day, headlines put SeaWorld in wonderment, calling it the aquatic playground. The press had praised the park so much that by the end of the first fiscal year, the park had seen about 400,000 guests. But the four friends were still dealing with issues they never saw coming. The trained sea life wasn't used to the sound of thundering applause, and sea lions tended to freeze after completing the task at hand and hearing the applause. Their advertisement for the park also hurt them short term. The publicity that the park was wonderment made people really exceed their ideas than what they would actually see when visiting the park. During the construction, wild rumors and headlines talked about mermaids becoming your own personal tour guides, penguins riding dolphins, the chance to swim with sharks, and to see some of the biggest ocean life up close and personal. All of which of course stayed on paper, but the idea of having an orca whale was always in the picture. The main problem? No one knew how to capture one, and no one knew how to keep one alive in captivity. In December 1965, the park teamed up with an aquarium in Seattle that had just captured an orca whale but didn't have the space to keep it in captivity. The first orca whale was then delivered to SeaWorld San Diego, where it received the name Shamu. And with the arrival of Shamu, business boomed. The four founders invested almost all of their profit back into the park, and within three years, SeaWorld became the biggest marine life theme park in the country. Plans began to expand. The four founders attempted to open a thrill park in Santa Clarita with a farming company called the Newhall Group. And if you've ever seen my very first video I've ever made for this channel, then you know I'm talking about Six Flags Magic Mountain. 
If you watched that video, then you already know SeaWorld walked away from the project due to its location. The four friends were already developing SeaWorld Ohio and thinking about making their third park in Orlando their thrill park. However, right after celebrating the opening of SeaWorld Ohio, the original Shamu passed away in 1971. The name Shamu had already become a huge trademark within the company and was very popular among park goers. Rather than change their mascot's name, the park chose to attach the name to future orca whales that came to the park. This way, the name Shamu would always be in circulation during their shows, although the whales would have their own names when they weren't in circulation of the show. Basically, think of it as a stage name. But eventually, the four founders wanted to move on to other things, and with the untimely death of co-founder David DeMont, the remaining founders sold the rights to all three theme parks in 1976. Ken Norris went on to do some pretty cool things. A marine biologist who loved dolphins more than anything uncovered a lot of the mysteries of dolphins and their intelligence level, and why they always seem to find one another no matter how big the ocean. In 1965, Norris founded the California Natural Reserve System, which helps protect natural habitats around the area. In 1972, he was one of the main figures who pushed the Marine Mammal Protection Act. If you're not familiar with this act, it was passed on December 21st, 1972 by the signature of President Nixon. It made hunting, killing, capturing, and harassment or attempting any of the above illegal in the United States for the purposes of import, export, or the sale of the marine mammal or any part of the marine mammal. On August 16th, 1998, at the age of 95, Norris passed away in Santa Cruz, California. Milton Shedd, a World War II vet, continued to work with SeaWorld. The first president of SeaWorld would eventually become a chairman for nearly two decades. His ideas for the company eventually gave him the nickname the Walt Disney of the Sea. He eventually left the company to open up his own fishing business. An active fisherman and marine environmentalist, he always went by this motto, you always have to go a step beyond and put fish back into the ocean and not always be a taker. Shedd passed away in May of 2002 after losing a fight to cancer at the age of 79. And the mastermind behind all three parks, George Millay, created the water park company Wet n Wild in 1977. He made water parks mainstream and was donned the father of water parks. He was inducted into the Amusement Park Hall of Fame in 1994, and in 1998 he sold Wet n Wild and retired. In 2004, he was given the Lifetime Achievement Award by the World Water Park Association. Malay stayed put in San Diego until his death on February 6, 2006, after complications from lung cancer. He was 76. Returning to 1976, the company was bought for $50 million by Harcourt Brace Jovanovich, or HBJ, a company that made its fortune selling textbooks. HBJ immediately opened a new Shamu Stadium, and throughout the years of ownership, the Penguin and Shark Encounters. In 1987, the company bought out aquariums and potential future rivals for marine wildlife theme parks around the area, moving almost all the sea life from those areas to San Diego. An orca whale from one of those parks made its way to San Diego under the name Corky. Corky is still at the San Diego SeaWorld as of this upload date and just recently celebrated its 54th birthday. But the company clearly was struggling on maintaining marine life exhibits and cut ties with the park. Auctioning it off to 16 park companies, it was Anheuser-Busch that became the highest bidder. In 1989, they took full ownership. With the new owners, Anheuser-Busch added the first ride to the theme park in 1994 called Mission Bermuda Triangle, which we'll get into in a later video. The Anheuser-Busch company sold its entire theme park company to the Blackstone Group in 2009. Blackstone was known for helping Legoland theme parks get off the ground and were the current co-owners for Universal Studios Orlando. They officially changed the banner that all their parks fell under to SeaWorld Entertainment. While the Blackstone Group added rides, new shows, and updated areas of the park, 2010 started what were labeled as the dark days for the SeaWorld company as a whole. At the Orlando Park, a trainer was killed by an orca whale after the animal pulled her into the water. It was the first recorded death of a trainer from the SeaWorld company. 
The Occupational Safety and Health Administration, or OSHA, fined the SeaWorld company for federal violations of workplace safety, and SeaWorld went to court to fight it. Not so much to pay the fines, but because OSHA wanted to keep trainers out of the water with orca whales, which had been the main attraction for SeaWorld since the introduction of the orca whales. The three-year battle came to an end in 2013 with the release of the documentary Blackfish. And I use the term documentary very loosely here. Whether you're for or against the captivity of orca whales, I implore you to do your own research and do not just base your opinions off of one thing you saw. Documentaries can have opinions. Lord knows Michael Moore does this in all his work. But a good documentary shows both sides of the coin. Using an emotionally charged piece to get your message across to those who choose not to think for themselves is called propaganda. Now, I'm not saying orca whales and captivity is right, but I am saying please do your own research. I will be covering Blackfish more in depth on my other channel, Mighty Entertainment, at some point. But for now, let's get back to SeaWorld. So the documentary Blackfish comes out, and it causes a pretty sizable revenue loss. SeaWorld doing damage control quickly pays the fines for OSHA and announces in 2014 that trainers will no longer be in the water at the same time as the orca whales. In 2016, SeaWorld announced the San Diego Park would cut out orca shows altogether and instead have whales in a more natural enclosure. SeaWorld eventually announced this would become a company-wide thing by 2019. Since 2016, SeaWorld as a whole company has been slowly taking out the Shamu image that has followed it for so many years, changing their logos, retheming rides that used to use the word Shamu, and even changing Shamu food items, such as the Shamu cookie, which is now called the Whale Cookie. Most recently, it was announced that SeaWorld would be opening a new park in Dubai. It will become the first SeaWorld park never to have an orca whale in captivity. While SeaWorld will always be about understanding marine life, all parks are slowly moving to a thrill park setting alongside the animals of the sea. The next three videos will be covering those rides, from the beginning to the end. So if you're excited to learn more, please subscribe or like this video. This will be my shortest series I've ever done so far. So if you're waiting for the next park, the best way to do that is to subscribe. Until then, take care and be safe.